Hello everyone! For today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an Easter dress for the Disney Animators Dolls Collection. This will be a two-part series, the first video showing how to make the dress, and the second showing how to make the apron and shoes. I'm also going to have timestamps in the description for the different stages of the sewing. Alright, let's jump right into things. Also, in the description below, you'll find the link to the free PDF for the pattern. You're going to start off by cutting out all the pieces. Once done, all the pattern pieces are ready except for the four long strips marked part one and part two, those being the skirt ruffle and the apron string. Those you'll need to glue together. For the apron string pieces, make sure you match up the arrows when gluing. This is so the two notches are on the same side. Now all your pieces are ready, and all you have to do is choose your fabric and cut them out. For this dress, I'm using quilting cotton, but what colors or patterns you use for what pieces of the dress are entirely up to you, so just have some fun with it. Now, when cutting out the pattern pieces, typically the line in the middle of the pattern indicates the grain you're to cut the pieces on, but for something like a doll dress, it really doesn't matter. But I'll give a really quick lesson on grain. The lengthwise grain is the most common, which follows parallel to the salvage, the scrap piece along the edge of your fabric. But if you want to cut out your patterns on the lengthwise grain, the cross grain, which is perpendicular to the salvage, or a combination of the two, maybe because of your pattern, you can just go right ahead. The only thing you want to avoid is just haphazardly placing your pieces because most fabric does stretch along the bias, which is the line at roughly a 45 degree angle. So cutting them off grain can cause problems when sewing. Now I'm just using a standard pen for tracing and making sure to mark all the notches. These will help a lot as guidelines when sewing, so make sure that you mark all of them. Also note that I'm tracing all the pieces on the wrong or back side of the fabric. For the skirt back panel, I realized as I was tracing that to avoid confusion when sewing, I should have made the center back notch a double notch. So the notch across from the line just mark with two little lines. And then here is where I realized I was making a mistake. I've marked all the pattern pieces with how many of them you need to cut out. When your pattern says to cut two, you want the pieces to mirror each other, unless otherwise stated, because you need a right and a left side. So I crossed out the center back notch, pretend it's just not there, and I flipped the piece because luckily it's just a square. I then marked the notches on the appropriate side. Now normally you would make a small snip in the fabric at the notches, but because the seam allowance we're working with is so small, we're working with about a quarter of an inch, we're just going to draw them on. Once everything's traced and all the notches are marked, you then want to cut out all your pieces. To make things easy for myself, I serged some of the pieces. This isn't necessary, you can just use glue on the edges to stop any fraying, and that's what I'm going to do on most of the dress. I also will show you later in the video what I call poor man's serging for those who don't have a serger or an overlock machine. But most of the places I'm going to be gluing I'll be doing once the dress is finished. Now there are some glues specifically for things like this, but always make sure to read as many of them warn to avoid any contact with skin. I didn't really want to go to all the trouble, so I decided to just simply use tacky glue. Even though it's water soluble and not ideal, I have no intentions of washing the dress, so it'll be fine. But for those who have a serger, these are the pieces I serged and wear. Alright, so now we're going to start sewing. Take the two pieces of the skirt ruffle, laying them good sides together if you have a pattern on your fabric, or if not, then you want the notch markings facing outwards. Then sew the two pieces together along the sides. I'm just placing some pins, pretending that they're sewn, because once you do that and you have a circle, then you'll be folding under the serged edge and top stitching to create the bottom hem. 
both the top and bottom of this piece are identical, so just pick one for the hem. Just make sure that you're folding it under to the side of the fabric that also has the seam allowance, not your good side. If you didn't serge the edge of the fabric, you can fold it under twice and top stitch just to hide the raw edge. Then on the opposite side, which is going to be the top, you want to do a gathering stitch. Okay, so here we're sewing together the side seams. Again, the seam allowance on this pattern is about a quarter of an inch. Most machines have a guide on either their foot or on the machine itself to help when sewing. After sewing the side seam, this is where I'm going to show you the alternate to serging you can do. You're going to want a zigzag stitch like my machine has for the number 8 stitch, a standard back and forth zigzag. You don't want something like number 9 that's multiple stitches each way. I'm going to be leaving my stitch width at 5, which is my machine's auto setting, and the length I'm putting to 1.5. I would suggest doing a sample of this first on scrap fabric to get a feeling of where you need to line up the edge of the fabric and what width works for you and your machine so that the zigzag is only on the seam allowance. Ideally, the first stitch will be on your seam allowance, the second will go just off the edge of the fabric, and then it'll go back onto the seam allowance, back and forth until you're finished. Afterwards, your results should look something like this. Now we're going to do the gathering stitch, so again we have to change our machine settings. You just want your standard straight stitch, but instead of a normal stitch length, which is often between 2.2 and 2.5, we're going to go up to roughly 4 or 4.5. Now, I sewed my gathering stitch all the way around, but in hindsight, I would suggest you doing two gathering stitches. One on each piece from side seam to side seam, just making sure that you don't overlap your starting and ending points because then you won't be able to pull and gather it. Doing it this way will make it much easier for you to work with. Also, make sure that your gather stitch is within your seam allowance because you don't want it visible on your dress at the end. If it ends up being visible though, because it's such a loose stitch, it's really easy to remove with a seam ripper. Now a huge tip, make sure that you change your stitch length back to normal after doing this. You don't want to actually sew with a gathering stitch and it's super frustrating to only realize after the fact and have to redo it. Okay, and now I'm going to the opposite side that I just worked on and folding it under to do my top stitch. It's a good idea for anything like this to start at a side seam, that way your starting and stopping points with your back stitches are somewhat hidden, more so than they would be if they were just in the middle of the front and the back where they would be more noticeable. This isn't a big deal, it just creates a cleaner look in the end. Now we're going to set this piece aside for a while and move on to the skirt. Now we're going to assemble the skirt, sewing the back panels to the front. Take your two back panels and match up the double notches. These are going to be facing outwards. You want to lay your pieces good sides together and then sew the side seams. Once that's done, you're then going to sew a gathering stitch along the top of the skirt. Now, how can you tell the top from the bottom? Well, you should have all your notches on the bottom of your skirt. They'll be needed to help you attach the ruffle later on. The top should only have one notch at the center front. Now here, I have to sew just past the serging that I did, so I probably have closer to about half an inch seam allowance, but because we're gathering the skirt, there's lots of extra fabric, so losing a little bit isn't going to matter. Then do the gathering stitch, remembering to change your settings back to normal afterwards. Then we set this part aside for later as well. Now moving on to the bodice. First we're going to attach the yoke or the bib, whichever you want to call it. We're going to put the pieces right sides together, notches outwards, matching these two center front notches and placing a pin. 
then I'm matching up the edges at the shoulder and placing another pin. And then I'll slowly work my way from these points inwards, placing a pin every centimeter or quarter of an inch, half an inch. I work with both metric and imperial when sewing, so I never know which one to use to explain best. Basically, pin as often as needed and just have patience. It can be a little tricky, so just go slow. Then do the same on the other side. And once you're done, you'll have something that looks like this. Now I'll be sewing with the shirt side facing upwards, not the yoke, because I want to try and avoid any kind of puckers or anything getting caught as I sew. For the first few stitches, because it's a straight line, I sew with my machine as normal. Also make sure to remove your pins as you go, don't sew over them. That's a good way to bend your needle or ruin it, even break it or break a pin. Just take them out as you get close. Once the line starts to curve, I'll just walk my machine for each stitch. To do this, just use the wheel on the outer right hand side of your machine. Pay attention to what direction it turns as you sew normally, clockwise or counterclockwise, and then turn it that same way. It's just hard on your machine if you go the wrong direction doing this, but this way you can control each stitch rather than using your foot pedal. I'll be doing this several times while making this dress for most all the difficult curves. But this way you can stop with the needle in the downwards position and lift up your machine foot to lightly turn the fabric and continue. For some curves you may have to lift the foot and turn for each stitch, but in the end this will give you a nice rounded seam. Again, just be patient and take your time. Not happy accidents, Bob Ross. Not in sewing. Once done, you can iron it flat for a nice clean look. Now, I'm not sure where the footage went, but next I lined up the front and back bodice pieces to sew together at the shoulder seam. The little notch on the shoulder of the back bodice piece ideally should line up with the seam that we just finished sewing. Once done, it should look something like this, and then you can iron the seams flat. Now we will be moving on to the sleeves. First we need to add our gather stitches. You'll need one on the top and one on the bottom for each piece. Now we have three notches. This is to give you a guide of where your gathering stitches are going to be going to and from. You can go a little past them, you don't have to stop exactly at the notch, but we're going to do one on the top and one on the bottom for both of them. Now we're going to gather the bottom portion of the sleeve and pin it to the cuff. So place your pieces good sides together, lining up your center notches and pin at the notch. If you serge the one edge of your cuff, you don't want to be using that side. Use the raw edge. Then match up the edge, placing another pin. And we want to place another pin close to that outer notch on the sleeve pattern. Just make sure that the fabric is flat from the edge to this pin and all the fabric that we're going to gather is pushed towards the middle. Then repeat for the other side. Once that's done, you're going to take one of the threads of your gathering stitch and lightly pull it to start gathering the fabric. 
Once it's gathered to the same length as the cuff behind it, and all you maybe need to do is just even out the gathers, you can take that thread you were pulling and fasten it to the pin. For this, you just go underneath, across the front, and underneath, repeating this a few times back and forth. This way, your gathers won't loosen as you work. Then, if needed, even out your gathers and repeat on the other side. Once you're done, then we'll sew straight across. Then I ironed, once done. Now we're going to finish off the cuff, so if you didn't serge your cuff piece, you may want to add a little glue to the raw edge and let it dry before doing this to avoid any fraying later on. Next, I'll take the cuff and fold it towards the underside, a little more than half folded under, so that I guarantee that I'll catch the edge when sewing. We're going to top stitch on the yellow cuff right along the edge, so I'm pinning right in the seam line so that when I flip it over, if I've caught the backside of the fabric with the pin, I know that I will with the needle as well. Now, I explained this next step before I had actually sewn the cuff just because I've changed my whole setup to film the actual sewing, so just pretend the pins aren't there. But next, we'll be attaching the sleeve to the bodice. Normally, you would have a right sleeve and a left sleeve, but these sleeves are identical so you don't have to worry about it. Simply take one of the sleeves and match the top center notch with the shoulder seam of the dress and pin. And similar to the cuff, Place a pin at the edge and line the fabric flat from that point inwards, pinning until you reach the outer notch on the sleeve. From this point, you then gather the fabric. Then repeat on the other side, and then the other sleeve. When sewing the sleeves on, I worked with the bodice fabric facing upwards to make sure I didn't create any puckers when sewing. I did a combination of sewing normally and walking my machine on the more difficult parts. Once you're done, if you can see your gathering stitch on the good side of your dress, you can just use a seam ripper and remove it. Next, you want to sew the side seams, so line up the sides and pin. It's most important that the cuff edges match. The next most important is that you match up the seams where the sleeve and the bodice meet. And then if the bottom edge of the bodice is a little bit off, it's alright, you won't be able to tell by the end. Now back to the skirt piece. You're going to start gathering the skirt, but because this is a longer piece, you want to go slow. Pull the gathers and then move them inwards. If you try to just pull hard and gather the whole thing that way, you likely will snap your thread. This is also why, for gathering stitches, it's best to pay the couple extra dollars and get a good quality thread because it's much more difficult to break. Once it's roughly gathered, you're going to start pinning it to the bodice. Start by matching the middle notches on both pieces and place a pin. 
then your pinning points will be the edges and matching up at the side seams. Now, as you continue to gather, it's best to keep that side seam pin out for now. It's best to gather from that center pin to the side seam, and once you're happy with it and the side seams match up, then place a pin and continue for the back portion of the skirt. Then do the same for the other side. A little tip here is to make sure that your gathers extend right up to the pin. You don't want to have the skirt all gathered except for roughly a centimeter space right at the center where your pin was. Although at the outer edges, which is going to be the center back, I'm not going to gather right to the edge. This is because we're going to be placing velcro for the closure, so I'm leaving the fabric flat for about roughly a centimeter or half an inch at each edge. Then once all gathered, you're going to sew straight across. For this, I have the skirt side facing up, but I would suggest doing it with the bodice side facing upwards as I unknowingly sewed a fold in mine and had to redo part of it. But again, for this seam, if you serged your pieces, you're going to have to do more than the quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're moving on to the collar. This is a pretty simple piece. You want to take the edges and fold them inwards, roughly half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch. Then fold the entire piece in half, pinning at the edges. I'm going to press this piece before I sew just to make sure it holds in place and then sew a gathering stitch along the raw edge. Then I roughly gather the collar. And now we're going to attach the collar to the dress itself. First, you need to choose what side of the dress you're going to fold under. This will be the top side of the Velcro closure. It really doesn't matter which side, I'm only choosing the left because I have a wider area at the skirt before the gathers start. So whichever side you choose, you're going to fold it under about a centimeter or half an inch, and then place pins so you don't forget. Then match up the center notch of the collar with the center front notch of the bodice and pin. Then going to the side that we didn't fold, instead of pinning it right to the edge, you want to move it back from the edge roughly the same amount that you folded over the opposite side. I'm just eyeballing, but the goal is that when the pieces are velcroed together, that the collar ends will butt up against each other. Then the other side goes right up to that folded edge. and then you can even out the gathers and add a few more pins. And once you have it pinned, we're going to be sewing straight across. After you have it sewn, you're going to stand the collar up and top stitch along the bodice edge, making sure you're sewing on top of the seam allowance on the underside. This will make sure the collar stands up. 
Now we're sewing the center back seam together. We'll only be sewing from the hem of the skirt up to the double notch, but you want to start by matching up the waist seam. This point you want to match when everything's finished. It's alright if your hem's a little off because we're going to be adding the ruffle. Now remember that side that we folded under, the amount folded under is what's going to be the width of our seam allowance. So for me this is about a centimeter. So starting at the hem, you sew up to the double notch and then you're done. Now we're doing the skirt ruffle. Hopefully you took my advice and did two gathering stitches because this will make it much easier to gather. I gathered it a bit in advance just to help things go more easily, but then I started by pinning at the side seams of the dress to the side seams of the ruffle. Then I found the middle notch on each side of the ruffle and pinned it to the center back seam and the center front notch. Then you should have another set of notches to match on each side of the center. On the back of the skirt, I couldn't find my notches. I'm not quite sure if I accidentally sewed these pieces upside down, so the notches might have been at the top of the skirt. But either way, I just folded the fabric in half, matching the side seam and the center back seam, and then marked the middle point. That's roughly where the notch should have been anyways. Then start your gathers at the center front and center back, working towards the side seams. Once it's all pinned into place, you're going to sew all the way around. Then I also top stitched on the dress, making sure to catch the seam allowance on the underside. Instead of top stitching right close to the seam like I have on the rest of the dress, this time I'm top stitching about a quarter of an inch away, following a line that I have on the foot of my machine. Again, I started this at the side seam and began to go around. I could have pressed this beforehand, but I didn't want to press the ruffles, so instead I'm just making sure to pull the fabric tight. Now we'll be attaching the velcro. I already cut these pieces roughly down to size, about the length of the bodice, using paper scissors, not my fabric scissors. And now this velcro has bare edges on each side, I'm going to be trimming those off as well as trimming it down to about a centimeter in width. The second piece I lay on top just to make sure they're the same size. And now there's a prickly side of velcro and a soft side. I usually like to put the prickly side on the bottom and the soft side on the top. This is just a personal preference, but I think it works best. So then we're going to sew around the edges of the velcro. I was just going to lay it down and sew it, but I ended up hand basting the velcro to hold it in place. To do this, you just need a needle and thread and to do a couple stitches in the middle of the velcro away from where you're going to sew. 
once you're done, you'll just remove the basting stitch. At this point, I decided it just needed a small finishing touch and I had a little ribbon flower that I hand sewed onto the front. All right, and now we're finished the dress. Thank you to everyone for watching. If you made it to this point in the video, congratulations, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to learn how to make the apron and the shoes that go along with this dress, you can click on the part two video. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.